Hey everybody, tonight we got a special thing. We're going to talk about what minerals go with gold. So I welcome you to our special edition. This is kind of looking at the USGS gold maps information that I've talked about for the last few videos, but from a new twist. I'm looking at a map that's generated off of the homepage. There's an area that you can go to look at gold, uh, not gold, but look at various mineral commodities and so forth. It's a different kind of map. And uh, <clears throat> the reason why I chose to show it is uh, it was easy for me to set up and show what minerals that are normally associated. Remember a few weeks ago we had a discussion about gold habitat or the associated minerals that go with gold. And I thought, you know, this would be a convenient time just to swap the ideas around a little bit and show you a map of various minerals that are associated with gold. Last night we talked about uh, Virginia and the gold that's found in the area of Virginia primarily consisting of a lot of sulfides and calcopyrites and pyrites. And so uh, I thought, you know, it's kind of fun. I wonder if I can do that. And sure enough, this tool I'm going to show you in a second. It's a, it's a part of the same USGS site, the MRDS, but it shows you how to basically lay out worldwide an image of where different minerals collect. And it's kind of astounding in what it reveals. So I'm going to go to that in a second. You saw a hint of it in the first first image. Um, but the idea here is I want to go look at the concept of those habitats or associated minerals. So I'm looking at sulfides. I'm looking at galena. I'm looking at uh, zinc. I'm looking at, at uh, various types of metals, uh, at osmium, iridium, uh, uh, platinum, uh, palladium. That's been in the news lately. Uh, as well as other minerals that are associated with the hydrothermal kind of activity as well as other kinds of injection deposits from magma deep within the earth and how that fits with the picture of the geology that goes on in the earth because that's what I'm going to talk about tonight. So let's flip to the picture of interest uh, right now. So what you see here is an image that I generated um, yeah, let's let's uh, so I can still talk to you. So what I've got shown is an image of the world that shows the layout and it's kind of repeated. So you have to be careful. The center part's the only one that has the data on it. This is one of those globes that, you know, Mercator projection that shows up over and over again. Kind of weird. Um, but anyway, uh, the idea is that you can scroll on it to go any place in the earth. The problem is it doesn't repeat the mineral data. So yeah, what can I say? But the, the thing we're doing with it is showing you where these locations are that have associated minerals like the sulfides we were talking about. And as well as zinc and, and lead and, and galena and all that, you know, stuff that goes with lead and goes with gold and goes with silver and, you know, silver. And so what it is, I just kind of thought, well, that'd be kind of fun to go over onto this plot. And I'll show you right now how I, you know, kind of what I did, not how. But uh, uh, let's see. So we have all these different things that are associated, such as arsenic, arsenopyrites, and so forth. Uh, chromium, copper sulfides, uh, gold, obviously, iron pyrites. Uh, oh, there, we're missing lead, so I'll put lead down. So add lead to the mix there. Um, and uh, we have... Uh, uh, there's a lot of things that would go on, but I'm not putting in refiners or things like that. Olivine tends to associate with gold pretty intensely. Uh, uh, let's see. Platinum, rubidium, uh, and so forth. And, and certainly this is by no means a complete list, but you start to get the picture. So uh, there's zinc down there. Uh, zinc goes very strongly with gold. So now what I'm going to do is just shrink this and zoom in a little bit on this picture and what we're going to look at is see the density of these prospects what what's been identified now let's uh get it to refresh and completely lose the data while it's doing its thing because it seems like it's going to be acting up on us i'm going to go to a picture i took of that picture <laughs> and we'll just zoom in on this picture um, and show you some of what's happening um, these areas with the blue are essentially um, zinc deposits. Now what's fascinating is 
look at Japan, just loaded with the stuff. And, and so you start seeing a picture that is interesting geologically speaking, because everywhere you see these bands and you see these long stripes of mineralization are areas where there's intense volcanic, hydrothermal, orogenic or mountain building activities, earthquakes. So I wanted to call your attention especially to something kind of unusual here. Um, let me back back out again. Zoom. So it's a little hard to see with this picture, but right now you can see there's not a whole lot of stuff here over in the Koreas, but I'm certain there is material there. The problem, again, is the secrecy of the North Korean state and the busyness of the South Korean state. So it's not quite as prominent as what you see in Japan, where they are busy exploiting their mineral resources to the max. So one of the things that you'll notice is all the way around this edge of the Pacific and especially on this west coast where we've really exploited mineralization a lot and along South America. This is called the Ring of Fire. What it stands for is there's an area where in the middle of the ocean, in the middle of the Pacific, right along in this area right in here, there's a, a, a segment of extrusion of basalt and it moves sideways. This magmatic extrusion process basically gives rise to the plates or the in, the, in this case, the Pacific Plate, if you're looking at the area of West Coast of the United States, and it moves along like a conveyor belt and then dives under this continental crust area, which is a lighter rock material. Uh, basalt is extremely heavy, higher in iron, higher in what we call mafic materials. Remember, we talked about olivine and basalt, and, and we talk about um, serpentine, and those kinds of things come out in these, in these conveyor belts. They're relatively mm, soft and brittle relative to other kinds of minerals as well. And so they tend to move along at a pretty steady clip and they fault and fracture, but they keep moving. And at places like Hawaii, where there's a hot spot underneath it, they provide an easy place for the magma to come up and vent. Same thing starts to happen when that stuff remelts and takes along with it some of the deposits along the margins of the continent deposits that were brought by all the rain that we talked about. That rain moves material down, including gold, osmium, iridium, etc. And it, and it reconcentrates on these margins and goes underneath. And that, along with magmatic material, concentrates gold into those hydrothermal jets that come up in the volcanoes we see along the Cascades, the Sierra Nevada, uh, Japan, you know, all around this ring of fire, Indonesia, uh, and, and ancient ones that happened back in history in other areas. So what you see is this concentrating conveyor belt. You also see down in, in South Africa, there's a region that's like one of these hot spots that was believed to be caused by a meteoritic impact, a very large one. And so you have this kind of combination of things going on that, that give rise to these metalliferous deposits. But I just wanted to show you kind of a graphic picture tonight of what that looks like around the world and some of the reasons geologically speaking for them to exist it's kind of fun to you know take something like this and and work with it let's see if there our uh, actual picture ever showed up nope it never did remember i was telling you how it kind of does this ripple of different things and the one in the middle is the one that shows up with the data but it's not being it's not behaving for me tonight so we're going to ignore that guy uh for the time being and go right back to Let's see, PJ live and subject. So this is my son. He's working our high banker and uh, and our sample hole. And so what we're what we're doing here is taking some of those rocks and minerals that we talked about in that previous discussion, and scooping them out and running them through the high banker, or you could run them through a sluice box or your pan. In fact, we pan some of this material to start with to find out what was in it and that it was of interest. And then we started going for the bedrock. Uh, we basically went down about six feet into this hole. Uh, it got a little steep on us and started doing strange things. When they get that deep and that narrow, they tend to cave in. This one didn't cave in, but we didn't like it. Uh, and that's a wise thing to do is to get out before you get in trouble. What we'll do another time is kind of round out the hole. We should have done that in the first place uh, because we didn't have an idea how deep the bedrock was going to be here. We, we had assumed it would be about two or three feet down when <laughs> we hit six feet and it was filling in with water at the bottom. Uh, we decided, you know, this is kind of scuba territory. 
um, we'll try some other things first. We did find some more gold. We uh, never did hit bedrock in this thing. Uh, that was an interesting thing in its own right because where it is, it isn't that far from where bedrock outcrops exist uh, right behind Josh there in the bushes. And so that means there's a very steep incline to the bedrock in this zone. Again, what's the bedrock made out of? In this area, it's serpentine. It's some of that same stuff we were talking about in this other image. And so these areas are high in that kind of serpentine material as well as basalt and lava flows, etc. So it, it really is one of these areas where you're bound to find just about anything if you look hard enough. And that that's part of what makes geology fascinating to me. I, uh, you know, ascribe to uh, this kind of material. Uh, let's see, PG line. So I, I like to use uh, rocks and minerals of California. Uh, you can get these things. Most any state has them. Uh, well worth investing in this kind of material. Uh, it will teach you a lot of the things that, you know, what the rocks look like in terms of their crystal habit. Uh, information about the rocks and where they're located. Uh, this one's pretty much black and white, which might seem bad, but uh, in reality, um, there's really good color pictures on the web. The black and white ones last in the field, <laughs> so it's a better deal sometimes to have that kind of material. The thing I like the most about this particular product is it has a lot of these maps like we're looking at on the screen but these are maps of areas where gold has been found for example uh, areas where other minerals and so it has a list of the minerals that are found and, and then it maps them out on this location uh, pretty much county by county and so you'll see me marking up the margins here uh, let's see where is it right here you know i've got uh, silver marked here and i've got over here gold so these are the primary minerals I'm interested in. Um, fancy that. But the idea is, you know, you, you get as much material as you can about any site you have and then go to it and map the material out. That's why I have this government gold maps thing going on still. Start there, find the gold near you, find where people have found it, expand that search, get some books, find some other materials, collect some minerals, get some books on mineralogy and have at it. So this is Prospector Jess, over and out, and have good prospecting this weekend. Good to see you guys on the show. Hey, let me check in um, just for fun. I'm going to look on the site and see you guys. Put your questions. If you got questions for me tonight, it's a good night to ask. Let me see what you got. Just got my phone out here. I'm going to dial you in, bring you up on my phone so that I can see the comments you put on the page please put comments below the, the videos when they come in any questions or anything like that i get on there usually i dive in for the next half an hour and answer questions if you have a chance put them in there let me know what you have on your mind also uh, let me know what topics you want to hear from me i mean i'm kind of diving off in directions that i'm familiar with and happy to talk about forever but you may not be interested in those you might be interested in some other stuff so let me know what you have an interest in learning more about when it comes to prospecting and finding gold. Let me dial you in right here. I'm trying to get to the right page. How do storm cells move gold? That was last week. This week we're moving other stuff. So let's take a look. Uh, gold in Virginia, that was last night. One thing I did here was there was a problem tonight uh, that it told me about. And it may be happening right now. Uh, that it had a little trouble linking up to Facebook. Something about my privileges. Not so much privileges is it about, you know, every so often they do just like the banks do. You have to kind of, you have to play games to kind of re reauthorize the, I use an app called XSplit to do these video, you know, live streams. And I can route them to all over the place. I can simulcast on YouTube and Facebook at the same time. If you're interested in that, we might try that. It has a tendency when it does that because it's kind of packing the streams. And my computer is an old i7. <laughs> Never thought I'd say that. It's got plenty of power to render video, but it doesn't render them f fast enough to keep up with two live streams going to two different places on two different codecs at the same time. Codec's a fancy word for packing the colors into the video. So there, Stuart says, hey, Jess, uh, Joe in Colorado. Great to see you, Joe. Bob's back from North Carolina. I hope he's happy after doing uh, North and South Carolina the other day. Uh, Mike McBride, good info. Good to see you, Mike. 
Um, like I said, uh, let me have your questions. If you got questions about any of this stuff, geologi ge geologically speaking, or if you have any questions about rocks and minerals and gold, or what goes with gold, or you know, tools to prospect for gold, or ways that you know the ways that I talk about gold, you know, anything you, you know, sky's the limit, guys. Try to keep it on topic, but you know, because I try to stay off of the politic thing. You don't want to get me going there. You just don't want to. I'm pretty civil. I had I had a family member who was actually very prominent in politics and that told me don't don't do that that messes up relationships something fierce uh, you might have your vision for the world but keep it to yourself thank you very much and so i tend to um but every once in a while you see a glimmer of it come out of me because i'm fairly conservative and i'm fairly involved in minerals rocks uh outboard motors you know uh, political issues uh carbon footprints and stomping on them that kind of stuff and so i tend to look at science from a conservative point of view and so i tend to be very logical and very try to not be too emotional but my emotionals can get to boiling if i go too far so i try to stay off of that stuff i had a professor and who was on one of the earliest boards here in california advising them on how to implement smog back in the you know these are smog equipment on cars back in the 1960s he was able to prove to them exactly how much smog they could remove and everything else. And he got completely overruled by a bunch of people who had some very emotional and monetary attachments to the project. And basically he learned, you don't ever mix science and politics. That's what he taught us in school. Now go figure this guy, this guy, you know, helped build the atom bomb and put man, men on the moon. And that was his comment about what's going on with us right now. I think he's probably right. Don't you comment below. <laughs> So, uh, so I just stay off of that stuff. It's, it's fun, but not really, you know, it's just gets too nasty, too fast. So, uh, let me know what your comments are. I'm going to see if I can answer some tonight. Um, if not, I will answer them next time. I got good info, Dave in Texas, always wondering if prospecting is legal where I am, says uh, Danny Young. That is a really good question. That's a whole series in its own right. And you know what? I probably ought to tackle a piece of that or two and, and put together a video. Tell me if you'd be interested down below if you want that video on claim rights and your legal rights under the 1872 mining law or other laws that may exist throughout the world. They vary. Your mileage may vary with respect to them. So you have to be careful. Um, always wonder where, where it's legal. Always make sure you get the right paperwork especially if you're borrowing rights from someone else you make sure that they actually have the claim rights they have the mineral rights that's the the property has the property that you can dig on it here in here in california for example i can dig all kinds of minerals on certain private property but i can't dig for oil go figure unless i have the oil mineral rights and that's how it works so there's sort of layers to these things and you have to know kind of what the local laws are about that um, so that's a really good thing. Uh, interesting information, Bob says tonight. Thanks, Bob. That's Bob Sheasley uh, from, let's see if I got it right again. I think he's North Carolina. And so we just did Virginia last night. I'm kind of moving through that region. I thought I'd pop this thing in the middle just to break up the monotony. I don't want to be monotonous. Uh, nothing worse than speaking with a monotone. But anyway, the idea is to kind of take you for a tour through the region. And you can see in this picture, I'm going to go flip back over to that other screen. And right through here, we've been kind of going through this region looking at gold potential. Let me zoom in a little closer and center it over on that region. So we've been, we've been touring for the last oh, three weeks through this southeast corner of the United States. We're heading up this region, but you can see this whole section right along through here has the potential for gold. Does it have a lot of gold? Not necessarily. And especially when you get down here in the you know, kind of Midwest, things start going really bonkers. There's stuff there that's associated with gold, but there's not gold. And, and there's some geologic reasons why, and I'll be covering those. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dive into this whole area including Ontario, Canada, because it plays a role in this whole mechanism, Michigan, etc. I've had a lot of requests for Michigan, but the, the problem here is 
the material that goes with gold is there. That stuff oftentimes is lighter in its overall density than is the gold. So guess where gold goes when it comes to a slurry? It goes to the bottom. Remember we talked about go to bedrock if you can, or go to false bedrock, clay, you know, that kind of material. So what's happening here is I'm just kind of touring along this area and I'll finish that tour out shortly. When I go over to West Virginia, I'll do a little, little flyover up in this area around Washington, D.C. just for fun. I'll probably do it on the same video because there just isn't a lot of gold there. It's kind of there in the area, but it's fun, funny and fun that you would find it in our HQ there in Washington, D.C. Go figure. Um, especially when those guys are the guys who give us the most trouble. Don't, I told you I wasn't going to go into politics. Okay, stop that. So uh, so that's kind of what I've been doing. Uh, you can see out west, you know, there's tons of gold, literally. Um, and you can see in, in you know, along... Chile and and uh, so forth, and you can see in Brazil there's and and Venezuela even has gold. Go figure. You know this country has gold, it has oil, it has all kinds of wealth, but it has a problem. Oh, wasn't going to get into politics again. <laughs> so it's it's fascinating to me. You can see all along in in the volcanic reaches that form all these islands in the Caribbean and and outer outer islands, you can get some serious gold anywhere you get volcanic activity. So just be aware that that's kind of that part and parcel of that picture. Uh, I thought I'd uh, leave off with that. So for tonight, you know, I think we're, I think we're kind of closing in with what minerals go with gold. Now, that, like I said, I stacked a lot of things going on here. There's, there's all of these pyrites we talked about. These are sulfides. Um, that's a large part of what you see. There's a tremendous amount of sulfides and so forth in the south, you know, mid-south, okay, this area right in here. Uh, you'll find that there's a lot of sour gas wells and things that form that's hydrogen sulfide, uh, very dangerous stuff for oil drillers um, and so forth. Uh, but again, here's the zinc and all that kind of good stuff. It's it's down in there um, and, and, and mixes in quite nicely, but but it isn't the only mineral associated with gold or platinum. You know, it's it's associated with other stuff too, and that plays a role. So, like oil. So, anyway, I thought I'd just kind of pop in and give you that as a message for tonight. And uh, let me see if we've got any more questions on our handy dandy cell phone here. The question of Matic nine thousand. Uh, Dan is watching from Montana, and uh, how to get from a get info from a country well one of the things uh that, that danny young asked that one of the things about getting info from a country is this this thing i'm talking about this usgs uh, government gold maps thing i'm talking about i show you how to use it internationally there are fewer uh documented sources of information you know somewhat proprietary but you can kind of get a feel for what's available based on the number of colored dots here because these are all minerals international and they're all found using the USGS MRDS uh, database. They aren't necessarily as richly uh, uh, colored as they might be. So you see in Australia, there's kind of a sparseness to the data considering the volume of minerals being recovered there. But there's also different laws regarding how it's transported and availability to the U US uh, government data sources. But the fact is it's there and part of why it's there is because we oftentimes we the US government becomes a repository for uh, things mineral things ge geology things uh, mineralogy in part because we economically depend on those resources coming from places like China etc. Uh, and so it's important that their maps be you know brought up to snuff as quickly as possible. And once that happens and it's in an area that is somewhat under the auspices or somewhat under the reporting uh, scheme of the U United States Geological Survey, which is you know a surveyor's group, um, then you basically can find it in this database. And so this gives you a pretty good start for international. I hope that answers your question, Danny. Um, and uh, that's what we have for tonight. I think we're out of time. Um, hope we're out of questions. If you don't have all your questions answered, like I said, question below. Uh, make sure if this is on YouTube that you subscribe to my channel. It's Prospector Jess on YouTube. If you don't belong to YouTube, go over there and join Prospector Jess. There's a ton more videos over there. 
uh, subscribe and take a look and then when these things pop in or when I go live over there uh, which I do from time to time uh, you'll get alerted and same thing on Facebook if you like the page in theory you're gonna get alerted um, we're looking into other technologies it's a little trickier I also know that um, there is some question about access to material and so if you need to contact me at request contacts excuse me request contact one t at hunting number four gold dot com that's request contact at hunting for gold dot com and just write me your question or you know if you need to ask for a refund we have a 30-day guarantee etc just let me know uh, anything you've got uh, try to answer your questions um, generally you'll find me referring you to a product that we have to answer the question and yes it tends to cost money it doesn't always I'm giving a lot of this material away for free for a reason and that is I want to help you find more gold but sometimes it takes time to build some of these things out and, and vet them into a, a DVD or whatever I'm building and so uh, we charge a fee and uh, not altruistic it's capitalistic uh oh I'm letting my politics show again <laughs> So the idea is uh, just to make sure that you have access to that material. And if there are problems, let me know and we'll take care of you because we're here to help. Prospector Jess, over and out and good night.